All right, we've talked about titrations before a little bit in class. We've done a little bit. We did the calculations. You guys took the quiz. A titration is basically when you add a known concentration to figure out the concentration of unknown. And since we're doing it in terms of acids and bases, really we're trying to make sure that they cancel each other out. They're equal. That's the whole point of equivalence, means that the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. And that's what we talk about when we talk about neutralization. They cancel each other out. That's what we're referring to. You use a burette. When you go to do a titration, you put the titrant inside. The known is always going to go in the burette. The unknown is going to go in the flask. And we've talked about that a little bit. Now, a couple key things. Fundamentally, equivalence point is the acid and the base react and cancel each other out. So you have the equal number of moles of acid, equal number of moles of base. We use an indicator solution at the end point is when it changes color. So then basically what happens is we construct a titration curve, which we'll do this week on Thursday, which is a graph of pH versus volume of a titrant. And I'm going to show you what some of those curves look like. That's the whole point in a titration is to find the molarity of the unknown, but we can also construct a curve. Now, how do we find the, con the concentration of an uh, unknown? Basically, this is the equation that we use. Molarity of the acid, MA, volume of the acid, Molarity times volume will always give us, give us moles. So we have moles of the acid right there. Pick a different color. Moles of the acids right there. Molarity of the base times the volume of the base in liters will give us moles. In this case, it doesn't always have to be in liters. It gives us moles of OH. And moles of H plus cancel each other out. So what happens in a typical titration problem is you're given three out of the four values, and you just algebraically solve for the unknown. So in this case, if you notice, I have NaOH, I have 0.25, so I put 0.25 molarity goes there. I have 28.5 milliliters of, of the base is used, so I'm going to put 28.5 ml, and I don't have to change this. I just have to know that my other volume on the other side has to be an ml, which it is. 17.8 milliliters of an unknown acid goes right there. That allows me to solve for the molarity of the acid. So I do that calculation, go through, I find the molarity of the acid. I can also use it to find the volume of the titrant that I have to add. If I know the molarity is a both and the volume of one, I can find the volume of the other, which does come in handy sometimes in chemistry. If you look, let me go back here, let me add a slide. The other thing that does come up sometimes is MAVA equals MBVB. I add another extra little thing because remember there are some bases that have extra OHs. So if I have a base with an increased number of OHs, I add a little, uh, the num I can add the value or the subscript of OH. If I'm dealing with an acid that's polyprotic, I can add the number of H's in the subscript goes there for a titration equation. That's if I give you something like, let's say, you were titrating with, uh, or you have H3PO4, and they gave you the molarity. The way you take into account the fact that it's polyprotic is by putting a 3 there. So whatever the subscript of the H is goes on the left-hand side. Whatever the subscript of the OH goes on the other side for calculations involving the titration equation. Now, here is a strong acid, strong base titration curve. How do I know? Well, here's how I know. When I look at it, first of all, it starts at an extremely low pH, and it basically increases, increases. Its equivalence point is 7. Only in strong acid and strong base titrations is the equivalence point 7. So basically, that's how you know it's automatically a strong acid, strong base, plus the shape of the curve. If you notice, it starts out straight at a very, very low pH and kind of climbs as you're adding the base. And then what you have happen is it will reach, eventually reach an equivalence point. Now, the idea when you go to pick an indicator is you pick an indicator that changes at equivalence or after. Notice how bronthymol blue, if you look right here, has a color change band. And you can use that, except the differences in the color are kind of hard to perceive between green, green, yellow, and blue. It's a little difficult in a flask. So typically, what we do is we choose phenothaline in our titrations, it's just past the end point. Here's the end point right here. You get a color change. That's why we use an indicator. And then it climbs up. There's other indicators up here. Climbs up and then levels off at a certain point. When you have excess base, it results in a high pH. So that's the general curve or the shape of a titration of a strong acid with a strong base. Notice they list the volume of the NaOH on the bottom there uh, for the acid. 
Here is a weak acid titration. How do I know it's a weak acid? Well, first and foremost, look at where the pH starts. The pH is above 2. It also gradually it increases rapidly, and then it reaches what basically we call the zone of buffering. Maximum buffering occurs right in this blue striped square right there. That's where when you have a weak acid and it's salt, if you're titrating it, you're, turn, you're producing the weak acid and turning, basic, turning some of that into salt. So what's going to happen is you have a buffer zone that occurs in a weak acid, strong base titration. So that is the area of maximum buffering. There's also a unique place right here. Halfway to equivalence, pH is equal to pKa. So pH is equal to pKa. So halfway to equivalence, if you went over here, the pH would be right around 5. That would also be the pH value is equal to the pKa value, and then you could find the Ka value. The equivalence point on a weak acid titration is well above 7. If you look, it's above 8. You could still use phenothaline because it changes color within that spectrum or that range right there. And then ultimately, it flattens out. You reach equivalence, and then as you add more and more base, the tail of it kind of tails off due to excess hydroxide. If you look, this is a typical weak acid titration. If you start the species that are involved, before you start your titration at zero, see the little red line right here? The only thing you have in solution is the weak acid in water. That's it. Then what happens is as you start to add a strong base, you basically go from having just the weak acid to a zone where you have a weak acid and it's salt. It's breaking apart. That's where the buffer region occurs. The buffer region occurs basically right in this area right here, number four. This is the area of maximum buffering right there. Then as you reach over here, the equivalence point is going to be right here. So the equivalence point is going to be above eight, which it should be for a weak acid, a strong base titration. It's right in the little green zone or it's right there. So at equivalence, actually I drew it wrong, at equivalence, notice there's only the salt left. And we did that on our titration quiz where we calculated the pH of just the salt. So you calculate the pH of just the salt, and then afterwards the, the uh, curve skyrockets because now you're adding excess OH, which is going to cause the pH to increase rapidly to a point and then level off. So if you look at a, a weak acid strong base titration curve, that's the general shape of the curve. Um, if you look, if you lay, overlay the two, this would be your strong acid, strong base in red. Low pH starts out, skyrockets, reaches a pH at equivalence of 7, continues up and levels off. The tail end of the curve looks about the same. If you take a weak acid, it's going to start at a higher pH, going to enter a buffer region where you, it's going to resist changes in pH, then eventually it's going to go up and reach equivalence above 7, because weak acids always have a equivalence point above 7, and you see it overlaid there. What if you were titrating a weak base? If you're titrating a weak base, it's like almost the exact opposite of what we did with the weak acid. You're going to start with a pretty high pH, but it's going to be probably less than 12, so if you notice, it starts right there. As you start, it's going to enter a buffer region almost right away. That's where halfway to equivalence, the concentration of the base and its conjugate acid are equal to each other. Then what happens? is you'll go down, get out of the buffer region, your equivalence point will be below 7. So 7's right here in the line. Equivalence will be below 7 because at equivalence, you're going to have NH4+. We know a positive ion will act as an acid. It will give its H to water. Therefore, the pH at equivalence, if you have just NH4 in solution, will be below 7. You pick an indicator that changes color somewhere in the range. Ideally, after equivalence, but in this case, you could use methyl red as an indicator for your titration because the pH at equivalence is 5.27, which we come to expect if you understand acid-base titration curves. There you see another compare and contrast of a weak acid curve versus a strong acid curve. On the AP exam, you're supposed to be able to spot the difference. And let's see here. Last but not least, two key points. Halfway to equivalence, so if you look right here, equivalence is at 10 milliliters here. At 5 milliliters, pH and pKa will be equal to each other. That's halfway to equivalence. Equivalence point is here, on a, and you know this is a weak acid titration. You can tell by the little slope and the shape right there. If you trace equivalence over, you guessed it, it is above 7. So those are some key things you need to know about titration curves and some key points. 
and about how to calculate out um, the values associated with titrations. Well, I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day.